Yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? That's me eating a Jimmy John sandwich for the first time, first bite. That'll all make sense in, uh, when you hear the interview. Uh, what's up? Uh, welcome to episode seven. Uh, this episode is a little different. At least I think it is. This interview is with Huey Crowley, who's an artist and a performer. He does these crazy characters on TikTok and uh, Instagram. Check him out on Instagram at Huey Crowley and then on TikTok at Roof Legend. That's one of his characters. Um, this interview is a little bit different. Uh, and that's because uh, Huey doesn't actually want to be in service, which is something that I really want to illustrate with this podcast, which is that there's Michelin star chefs, there's cooks like Ben, who I was in last episode. And then there's people like Huey, who's just a fucking artist trying to, trying to just passing through the industry, just trying to get to where he wants to be. Uh, so I really like the idea of like sandwiching uh, people like Ben and Huey together. And who knows, maybe after this, I'll get a Michelin star chef and it, it'll be, It'll be the full trifecta of the service industry. But uh, the other reason this interview is kind of a little more special to me is that I identify more with Huey than I do with Ben and with a lot of uh, cooks because I'm just, I've, I've always been like an artist leaning person, a creative leaning person. I'm always trying to do something else outside of work. Uh, I've never really, aside from one job, really leaned into the the workplace and try to move up the ladder, you know, kind of thing. And that that was at Eastside King working for Paul Key, which which was nice. But I always had these ideas in my head that I wanted to do something more, something creative and stuff. So I definitely I definitely identify more with Huey than I do with with most cooks. And 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 so this interview is definitely a, a lot more of uh the perspective that I come from. But aside from that, uh yeah, you're going to get to hear a guy who doesn't want to be in these jobs. So uh, he's kind of been forced through circumstances to be working at these places. And uh, and I want people to know that that's what services. When you go to fucking Jimmy John's, the guy there probably does not want to be there. I just went to Jimmy John's. I can tell you right now. I just went there. There's a guy, there's like a 50-year-old dude with fucking, that he used to have gauges. There's a 50-year-old man, 40-year-old man who used to have gauges. So he's got just dangly lobes and you can tell he's just, he's just like, he's like, dude, this is where my life is. This is what I'm trying to do now. I'm just, I worked, I worked at Jimmy John's and uh, would you like to sign up? Do you have the rewards program? Would you like to sign up? Well, if you'd like to sign up for the rewards program, you can go on our app. I'm like he doesn't want to be there. I don't know. Maybe I'm making shit up. Maybe he doesn't want to be there, but I mean, he made my sandwich. He made the shit out of my sandwich in like a fucking second. I mean, I turn around, fill a uh, cup with Sprite, look back around. He's like, got the sandwich ready crazy um and then the other kid who's working there is like this like emo kid with his emo haircut sticking out the front of his jimmy john's baseball hat hey that kid definitely doesn't want to be there he's like 19 he's just wants to go to sixth street and get fucked up you know but <laughs> i don't even know what i'm talking about but i don't know anyway i i love uh all sides of the service industry and um i find so much entertainment in the fact that people don't want to be there and they're kind of forced into it, and uh, and there's so much craziness that goes along with that. You know, there's just so many characters at that level of service at Jimmy John's. You know, because like I said, there's people that don't want to be in it, and they got failed dreams, and they're or they're trying to get their shit back together. I mean, Huey talks about it in this. He talks about people. Everybody he works with seems to have this like this like hustle on the side. So uh, people don't necessarily want to be there, but it just adds this dynamic. It's like weirdness to it where everybody's a fucking character. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm, I'm eating this Jimmy John's sandwich with, which, uh, we talk about in the episode. Um, I'd never had a Jimmy John's sandwich before. And Huey's like, yeah, I get the Jimmy John's sandwich. He told me to get a turkey, tomato with cheese, peps, peppers, guts on the side, mayo on the side. I didn't get that. I ended up getting this Italian. I can't resist an Italian. What, what do you want me to do? I can't do it. Turkeys, whatever to me. I can't, I can't, I need, I got to do an Italian. So, oh, by the way, I totally get what Huey means in this podcast by saying that Jimmy John's is his own thing. It's like everything is branded. Like the chips are branded. They don't even have, they don't even have like zaps or anything like that. It's just chips are branded. 
the sodas are branded, the cups are branded, everything's just its own thing. I totally get it now. I'm glad, happy to report that he did not get sick from the turkey, tomato with cheese, pepper, guts on the side, mayo on the side. He said he has since eaten many, many more Jimmy John subs. I think I reignited his passion and obsession with Jimmy John's. And I'm sure the cult at Jimmy John is very happy to have him back. So I'm sure he's tipping them to delivery drivers five bucks every time. Um, thank you for the all the donations. I've gotten a few donations. I've gotten some very kind words. Everybody's kind of engaging with the podcast. I really appreciate that. I would love some more engagement if you guys want to send some some questions my way, some some weird shit to talk about my way. I would love to have like little talking points in the beginning of these these uh, podcasts. That'd be cool to uh, engage with you guys a little bit. And you can do that on Instagram, DM, or email me at peonwebzine at gmail.com. One last thing. Uh, this podcast did run a little bit long. We ended up talking a lot about art and uh, some stuff that really wasn't about food service industry. Also, I ended up recording video, which I usually don't do. So the unedited full podcast with video and everything is going to be up on the Patreon page um, for tier two and above. If you want want to check that out, that's at the Patreon at PN Magazine. Enjoy Huey. Again, check his shit out, especially on TikTok. Check out his viral shit. It's a uh, it's not for everyone, but it's definitely unique. Go on the journey, the journey of the roof legend. It's a trip, man. Definitely, definitely check it out. Enjoy this episode. I'll be back in two weeks. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, dude. I had a feeling you had some pretty fucked up service industry uh, stories to tell, because I feel like every every person who's trying to do art pretty much has to work service. There's no there's no other way around it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I don't know that I have like fucked up service things. Um, it's not like crazy, I guess, but I have like I could share some insights. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I mean just like uh, it's a difference I feel in the service industry where it's like people who are working because that's they are working to make money so they can do their art and then there's people who are just cooks and like lifetime servers and they're trying right. to get better at being <clears throat> like, cooks or servers or whatever but right you know the people who are trying to just do art tend to you know have a shittier work experience because it's just it's not what you really want to do you're just fucking there you know yeah that that was me with art handling what is like, it what is that I'm, well, when you move to New York, uh, like everyone wants to obviously like work with a gallery or whatever, but like, uh, so like when you land there, like, you're like, Oh man, if I work at this like art handling company or like, you know, you want to work for a gallery or anything in the arts, they'll let you work as an art handler, which is basically like an installer packer shipper, like drive a truck, oh, okay. uh, to a client's house, like unpack a crate. And then you you think that that job's going to be awesome. And yeah, you do meet other artists in it, but a lot, but so that job is half artists and half ex cons. <laughs> that sounds like, service. like, it's like literally like people from prison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like prisoners and then people who like really care about it. Yeah. So but yeah, I did work in food too. It doesn't really lead to any place or is it like just harder to break in because of that? Um, some people have finessed. I, I heard of a dude, one dude who finessed, uh, like art handling into becoming like a dealer for this one gallery. Mm -hmm. And like, it was like a really high end gallery. So like, it's like, you know, like you make probably like 300 K a year or something like that. Cause you're selling like Jesus. maybe even more, yeah. maybe like millions because it was like a really high end gallery. So I heard of one dude doing that <clears throat> and I've heard of other people like, you know, there'd be an artist assistant and then, you know, the artist would be showing with like a really great gallery. This would be the dream is, is to do that. And then yeah. their gallery comes and checks out your studio, but that's, that's not really an art handler. That's like an artist assistant. So uh -huh. art handler, basically the, the greatest thing you can do is like just work for a really nice gallery that pays like $30 an hour when I was working, which was, uh, 2015, like $30 an hour for that would have been like a really good pay. They don't really pay that well. That $30 an hour is better than what a lie cook gets paid. So That's 2015 and in New York City. Oh, that's so, true. Yeah, that's that's nothing. 
they might pay more now. Like the, yeah. like the best art handler might maybe make like $35 an hour or something. I don't know. Now yeah. I, I really don't know. I haven't done it in a while, but yeah. Yeah. Damn. Uh, well, when'd you get your first job in service and why did you get it? Uh, I got my first job in service in, um, 2005. I worked as a dishwasher and yeah. What was that like? What restaurant was that? It was called the lighthouse Inn, and it's in my hometown, uh, called two rivers, Wisconsin. And it was, I can barely remember that one, but, uh, what I do remember of it, it was just, you know, I took this thing to squirt the dishes with this like hanging thing and it, then you put them in a, put them in a box and close the box and open the box. And, uh, yeah, I worked with these people called the dream team and the dream team was literally like mentally retarded people. <laughs> Wait, so was it a, was it a restaurant? Wait, sorry, that might not be PC mentally handicapped, I should say. But uh, yeah, they were the dream team and it was me and the dream team washing dishes. So wait, yeah. was it a restaurant that like employed mentally handicapped people or? Yeah, yeah. And they made them do dishes. And me. And you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> why, did yeah you, and me. why did you get paired with that team or was that just, that was just what the job was? Dude, that's it. That's every job I have is me getting paired with the dream team. Like literally every job. <laughs> because if I go to apply for a job, they're like, oh, you're a loser. We're putting you in the loser squad. <laughs> like instantly, no matter what I say, what? I can be like, oh, I, I did this. So I have this accolade and this accolade. They don't care. Like, why, why does, why do you think that happens? I don't know. It, even like with my art stuff, dude, like I like, I'm lucky enough to say I have like an inkling of a career. Like I live off my art, but like, dude, I'm like doggy paddling out here trying to stay afloat. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, that. uh, that's just me. I can't, I can't, you know, I've tried to do every, everything in my life, stocks and, crypto and jobs, work my way up a corporate ladder, try to, you know, start my own businesses, you know, even outside of my yeah. art stuff. And it just always is a fail. I'm always on the dream team. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? What was that job? Like, what was that crew? Like, well, do you remember? Wait, how old were you? 18. So I don't really remember, but, um, there was a dude there that would, he would, uh, I think this guy worked with us. I don't remember. It might be conflicting stories, but it was a guy who used to go to a roller skating rink and that we would go to and he would like play the fake air guitar when he would roller skate. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. he he worked with me and then I don't remember the other ones, but they were like slow people. And uh, the only thing I can really remember about that job was towards the end of it, this one, like the last two days out, actually I got a couple more things. The last two days, actually I got mad about other things. Not You're making me remember things. <laughs> yeah, um, this no goes, man. People, it's, you start to remember all this weird shit that happened. Yeah, so um, the last two days that I was there, this fly-ass chick started working with us. I didn't know her name or anything. She fucking hit me up on MySpace like a year later. <laughs> and was like, yo, what's up? And we hooked up. Actually, and she was on the dream team with me. But uh, yeah, we hooked up. She came to Milwaukee she- when I moved. And visit Wait, me. was she on the dream team? Was she on the? She dream? was on the dream team also, but she wasn't slow though. She was just a, like a hot okay. chick. <laughs> so she, she just got put on the dream team. Yeah. yeah, as I was leaving it, and then um, there was this one kid. It was weird, man, because it was I was eighteen years old, and there was this one kid who, uh, his name was Zach. I probably shouldn't have said his name. It doesn't matter. He didn't even listen to this. It doesn't, doesn't. Yeah. He became like the manager and he wore like a suit and tie and shit. And we were like in high school. And I just remember thinking like. <laughs> so he was, he was in high school he too? Was taking Jesus. it super serious. And like, yeah, he was like my slave master. And I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, I know. Like, you're, like in school, you're like way below me, like in popularity and like coolness <laughs> and fucking grades, anything. Well, that's why he was wearing a suit, dude. He's trying to get more friends, you know? Dude, it's just like, I know you, like you can't. Like, you're not going to fucking talk that shit to me. But he was. And then. So wait, yeah. was he like a man- manager and you're, you're the dishwasher? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What the and fuck? And I was like, bro, how? Are they, how? <laughs> are they hiring, a, hiring a high schooler to manage a restaurant? <laughs> I don't know. They did. I don't know. It was that's, so weird, man, because like I, like I said, there was other kids in my high school that worked there too. Like one of my friends was a cook. Like every, every job, like I said, every job I go, like everyone's way higher up on the ladder than me. And I don't, and I just don't, I, I don't know why. I guess probably the way I carry myself. Did you, wait, did you enjoy, did you, did, were you good at washing dishes or did you just fucking hate it? Cause dishwashing is, uh, 
I hated it. It could be a the, fucking nightmare. Yeah. It, I mean, it's kind of fun to, any job is kind of fun in a way, but like I, my parents for like, I didn't even need the money, dude. Like my parents just forced me to have a job. Yes. Like I I've didn't, I'm, I've always been like very frugal, you know? I, yeah. I don't spend yeah. very much money and my parents just like forced it on me. So I hated it. Yeah. But, um, did they force it on you? Cause they're like, uh, they're like, Oh, you got to learn some responsibility, that kind of thing. That's what my parents did. They're like, you gotta, you gotta learn how the world works. And yeah, exactly. But it's not really yeah. a great, it's not really a great, um, lesson in how the world works. Actually. It's like a lesson in how to be a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you know? you're, you're around a bunch of losers and you just want to stay in that loser bubble. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, yeah. I'm not calling being a cook or a chef a loser job at all because, you know, that that's no. like an yeah. amazing skill, especially if you're like Michelin star and take it or take, even if you're just aspiring, you know, like, you know, sh- being a chef yeah. is an amazing thing if you, if you, if you're very serious about it. But where I worked at was like, you know, Mike put, put the shit in the microwave and give it to a customer type place. Yeah. Yeah, that's what so, I mean. Yeah. Wait, why did you get fired from that? Because the chef was a fat bitch that was a waddling <laughs> penguin fucking whore. And she came up to me and she was like, where are my dishes? And I was like, go fuck yourself, bitch. <laughs> Something like that. And she just like... Ooh, just out was, of nowhere. Yeah, because well, because it was. Was, it, was, was there any lead up, or were you just like, no, nah, I'm fucking done with this? Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. She she had always like talked trash to me because she was higher up than me, and uh, I I was about to go to college like in a few days, and that I already had put in my two weeks notice, and like she was talking shit, and I was just like, I like don't even care. I did like so didn't care about that job. You know, my parents were forcing jobs on me, so I did that. And uh, yeah, I just talked shit back to her one time and then they uh, fired me for it. They just let me go early. They actually didn't even fire me. They're just like, we're not the, firing you. We're just going to like let you go earlier. Which so. means like you're never going to come back, right? You're just like, fuck it. Yeah. I feel like I could come back. I, I feel like, well, I mean, that was like 20 something years ago. I should go reapply there just for no yeah. reason. But no, just show up, dude. Like I'm back, guys. Yeah. They would never remember me. It, it That no. was like, literally almost yeah. 20 years ago. There's no way. Was it the was it the high schooler who fired you? Was he like, "Hey man, you gotta go home early"? No, it was it was no. the lady that ran the place. Oh, okay. But right. I don't I don't I don't like look down on that place. Like they're it's just dude. It, it's just like a small town like business. Like they, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have any beef or anything with them. Like yeah, they're just like a stereotypical restaurant that everyone probably would say. I I bet I was like the fiftieth person to tell someone there to go fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, they just yeah, small town restaurants all the same. Yeah, you probably yeah. see that all the time working at a restaurant. Yeah, well, I work at like a little more like high end restaurants and stuff. But back in the day, yeah, when I worked in like food trailers and shit, yeah, I mean people would show up like they say fuck off. They like people come in with torn shirts and torn pants and they like, smell like shit. It doesn't matter because in that environment, it's it's whatever. You just have a, you need a person. You need a body right. in the fucking yeah, room like a robot help. essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a there's a lot of drugs and drinking and they don't no one gives a fuck about the job. There's like there's like one dude, maybe like two who give a fuck just right. cuz they get paid a little more and that's about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same kind of thing. But uh yeah, where did you go from there? Did you end up uh, working at, at another place in college? Yeah, so my next job was um the this one's probably the maybe the funniest of the, the I feel like the first place like that's like not really that entertaining. Wait, um one second. Dude, what kind of food was it? Do you remember at the what? lighthouse? Yeah, the first place. Yeah, it was just like like kind of midwestern, like meat and potatoes. Yeah, midwestern, type of, type of midwestern, stuff. like set the table shit. Uh, like that doesn't really give you any information. Uh, like <laughs> I went there the other day with my girlfriend, and, and I had coconut flavored shrimp. Uh huh. Okay. And, uh, All right. I wouldn't expect that. It it wasn't like you could tell they didn't like hand prepare it. You know. Oh, like you know they uh, they like buy it, buy it from somewhere. Yeah, like yeah, they probably put it in the oven from a box, but like they like yeah. um and and like the salad they have is like iceberg lettuce with like a yeah. craft dressing or whatever. Oh yeah, like they just buy the I know I I know it like it's like a 5 gallon jug of like ranch like yeah, dressing or craft there dressing. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. I know that. That kind of shit. Yeah. But but yeah. it is that restaurant is actually for around here. It's actually kind of a nice uh, establishment, especially cuz it's like overlooks mm-hmm. the lake. Lake Michigan. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So for here, it's very nice for the world. It sucks, but <laughs> yeah. The next restaurant though that I worked at um, was nicer. My grandma hooked me up with it. It was called the University Club in Wisconsin, and uh, it was bougie as fuck, actually. Yeah, and um, like white tablecloth and shit. Yeah, tablecloth, like linen shit. Like my grandma hooked me up with it because she does like consulting and stuff. But um, okay. I would be like serving like governors and, or I don't know what it was, but like people in politics, like high end and for the state. And, uh, okay. it was a French dining or French waiter or something like that. Do you know, are you familiar with that? You mean like a French style waiter or what do you, what yeah. Do you so like, well, like you have to, ser- so like with French, whatever it is, I don't even remember what it was called. Cause that, that one was, um, that would have been 2006. So that one, um, you have to serve the plates with a certain hand. And you have to set the table, like the plates and stuff like that and the silverware a certain way for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah. And it was like really serious. Like you have to like serve a certain way, ask certain questions and fra- like say certain phrases to them. Make sure they don't see it, like one side of your body when you are talking. Like it's all like all these weird ass rules. Like Do you have like the towel like around like kind of hanging from your No, we didn't like have that? that, but um No. No, but like, for example, like a teacup would have to have like a doily under it or a dolly or whatever it's called. Doily? Yeah, yeah doily. Yeah. Doily. Everything was really specific. So it's like a flashback to like the 50s? No, it's like, I don't know what it is. And that kind of thing? Well, it was like really like grand, I guess. Like, you know, like they yeah. had like really nice old oil paintings hanging up and like really nice like gold gilted chairs. And um, that sounds really nice. Yeah, it was like elegant and it was a private, it's a private restaurant, right? So like you have to sign up. Yeah, you can't, you can't just like go there. Like you'd have to like sign up and pay a membership to eat there. And like I said, it would be like governors or not. I don't know if it was governors, but people in like politics. Hmm. And you were serving there? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, damn, that's a huge jump up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching the serving senators. It was still like, um, I mean, you know, the pay jump wasn't very high. It was probably, I think I maybe got like paid 12. I I think at the first dishwashing, I think I got paid literally like $8 an hour. I think this place, I maybe got paid like 12 or $11 an hour. But this place I'm talking about right here though, they would give us food at the end of the day. And it was like awesome food. The food was like amazing. You know, like they would have like, um, the the thing that I remember that they would serve us the most was, um, What's it called when a, a fern is like curled around and they cook? I forget what that's called. Fiddleheads. Oh, man. Fiddleheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fiddleheads. Those are, those are great. They taste amazing. They were giving you those? Yeah, they would cook them. And then so they, we would get Damn, to eat okay. like what the rich ass people would eat all the time. And they would have like fiddleheads and you awesome. know, like really, you know, like proper uh, bougie food, you know? So that's, we that's would. It. Yeah. yeah, I get to eat that every day. And then um, uh, there was a guy who was really sketchy that worked there named Brian. And he uh, was always on my ass for some reason. And like, Was he a manager? No. He just was a fellow just, employee and like would just like be like, oh, dude, dude, you didn't serve from the right? I was watching you didn't <laughs> serve from the right? Those dudes who give way too much shit about the job. It's like, dude, it's not, you're not that important, man. Yeah. Holy shit. Wait, how old was he and how old were you? Like he's like uh, 40 years old. He would have been something? like he would have been like 23 and I was probably 19. Jeez. Damn. Yeah, so he got he got like all, all in my case and then I remember one time he was like, "Dude, you got to start drinking coffee cuz you're always coming in here tired." And I didn't drink coffee at the time and I still yeah. don't drink coffee. And uh he got me drinking coffee for like a week. And one time he gave me a coffee that was like this big, dude. And he was like, drink that whole thing. You'll feel better. And dude, I drank the whole thing and I just, dude, started puking. Yeah. God, it's man, way sick. too much caffeine. Yeah. For, just especially so for a person sick. who doesn't drink coffee. Holy shit. Yeah. So, so that happened. And then, um, what was that like serving? Did you, did you feel overwhelmed? Like I, I, I hate serving uh, overall, but I can't imagine having to follow a bunch of fucking rules while you're trying to just get through the day. Yeah, dude, it, yeah, I mean, it, that's, that's, that's how I felt. Like, it just felt like, uh, like, I mean, you know, my art, I'm like very, <laughs> the opposite of bougie, you know, like, yeah. I just felt like very out of place, fish out of water. Like 
you know, I, I have moments in my life where I try to be bougie or try to act bougie or try to fit in with like high, high end, high class society. And like, I just, there's just no fooling it. So like, I just, <laughs> it just doesn't work out for me. It just, yeah. I don't know. It just was an epic fail really all the way, all the way around, you know? How, how did you, uh, how did you do? Did Shitty. you feel like you were good at the job or were you? No, I did horribly. I, I tried really, really hard to do well. And like, they'd yeah. have like, basically like pit bosses watching the servers, you know? And like, Oh yeah. Yeah. The just was like, managers. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just, was like failing. Like every time like, the, dude, you didn't give them from the left, dude, you didn't turn the do- do- doily down on the dish, dude. You didn't. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, you know what I couldn't do the most was memorize the fucking dish of the day. <laughs> Cause it always changed. And like, um, <laughs> They would give me a menu and be like, study the dish of the day. Start, memorize the dish of the day. And I, then I'll go there and be like, well, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> you know? like, I'm like, okay, what day is it? Oh, well, then today it's the salmon. Oh, so they had, you, they had a week's worth of like dish of the day and you had to remember every single one? Yeah. Tastes. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Shit like that. And then, um, then they had like the thing of the month and the shit like that. And it sucks because um, I totally didn't deserve to have a job like that. Like that's the type of job that I told you I moved to New York to do pursue art stuff. Like if I had an art job like that, I'd be like, Oh my God, I have this coveted fucking thing. Like I'm sure someone yeah. Yeah, who yeah. was aspiring to do food would have loved to been a waiter or whatever. But I just, I just, it just wasn't for me to the max man. Uh, yeah. Did you, did uh customers treat you all right? Or were they, dude, they don't like, even look at you or talk to you at that place. Yeah. Yeah. You so, know. so what the fuck does it matter whether what side of the I know. Of the person you put the plate down on? I know. And then the other thing is like remembering what they would order. I would just instantly forget the time I had to. <laughs> you didn't write it down, like, or were um, you not allowed to? I don't think <laughs> so, you were allowed to. You, you didn't memorize it. Did you have to just keep going back to the table? Like, wait. So what did you, what did you get, man? Sometimes I had to. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just so embarrassing. It just felt. Yo, like, yeah. It just was like so embar- That job was embarrassing as fuck. First, I don't. But you have to admit, like, like that makes you just not give a. F- right now, you you must not give a fuck about anything, any sort of embarrassment or anything, right? Right, but not because of that job. That no. that sort okay. of uh, that sort of giving up thing came in like twenty seventeen. Okay, okay, yeah, because I I started talking to this guy from London who like kind of advised me on my art stuff and gave me a lot of advice. And I used to really really care a lot about the audience, and he like sh- basically like shook it out of me to make me stop caring about my audience. Yeah, like, yeah. They stop caring about like, you know, looking like doing immoral stuff or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did they, did they tip you pretty well there? Did you at least get any like decent tips? No, I don't think, I don't even think we're allowed to accept tips. Jesus, man. Yeah. We weren't even allowed to accept tips there. Yeah. So you get, you get 12 bucks an hour and then go fuck yourself. That kind of thing. Yeah. But it was, it was in Milwaukee and that was in 2006 and I didn't have to pay rent. So it was just like kind of cush okay. little extra money. Yeah. I just bought like, gro- it actually wasn't even good money for that. Cause I could, I would just buy groceries with it and it'd just be shitty groceries, but I'd eat at the place. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That is one yeah. huge advantage of working in service. Sometimes it depends on place you work at, but you'll get, you get free food, right? At least one of your meals is kind of taken care of. Right. Yeah. 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 Did you, uh, did you end up quitting that place? Or did you get, did you get fired? That place, I actually had a nightmare that they were going to pull me into a dark room and fire me. And then that's exactly what happened that day that I went to the job. <laughs> Literally the exact same way it happened. That's amazing. The guy was like, yeah, and it was trippy because I didn't even know they had a dark room. They pulled you in and he was like, can you come with me for a second? And I was like, oh my God, this is just like in my dream. You're going to have to fire me. And he was like, yeah. He's like, you had a dream about this? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, the guy was nice. You know, like everyone yeah. I worked at these places, they're all nice and shit. Like the guy... I didn't have any, I was like, dude, I'm not even mad. Like, I know I'm not a good fit for this place. I totally understand. Like, it, you don't even have to say you're sorry. Like, it's just, it's, I totally get it. You know, not yeah. mad at all. How long did you make it? At that job? Yeah. I think I lasted maybe like three months. Okay. All right. Oh, another thing is uh, we had to set tables and like the dudes who I would work with would be like all like 
they're just so into it, you know, like we would be on this like rooftop thing that had like a glass, it was like all glass up there and you could like see the whole city from it. And they were really excited about making money. And I, I like at that, that time in my life, and even today, I'm really not really that excited about making money, to be honest. But um, they're like, yo, you know, we, these dudes came in here, or these, these, this guy came up and we got a, a $100 tip. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay I don't care. Like, <laughs> I just like did yeah. like they were like so hardcore all about that shit like just like flashing it and like being like yo we got a hundred dollar tip I'm yeah like, okay who's a fuck it's a hundred dollars but I like made their life you know yeah yeah I find that there's a lot of servers tend to have a lot more like they care a lot about like the amount of the tip and they keep track yeah. of like their biggest tips their, their and shit record. like that yeah exactly yeah kind of server lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I got some big ass tips when I worked in New York for like art handling places. Cause we would be working with like literally like billionaires at their houses yeah. and they would tip, they would tip like ridiculous, like way more than that. But, um, I wouldn't even care when they did it because I hated those jobs too, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so wait, were you going to college at the same time as this was, as this uh, job was happening? Yeah. At that, at that one, but it was like the summer break and this, the college okay. let me like live there for the summer. Oh, nice. What'd you go to after that? After that, my final service job was after school. And uh, that was uh, Jimmy John's in Milwaukee on Brady Street on like the shittiest, the shittiest location you could work at, which was like the busiest one. Well, one of the busiest ones. So when I was in, when I was in art school or whatever, Mm -hmm. I went to like for around for like Wisconsin, I went to like the most prestigious art school in Wisconsin, which doesn't mean shit because Wisconsin's not known for art. But at the time, the only reference that I had was that. So when I was in the school, I went to school for painting and I graduated and like in our class, we had like this like uh, senior thesis, right? Mm -hmm. So the school, they like vote to see who the best senior thesis kid is for the year, which is like, you know, a huge okay. acc- accolade for the kids in the school. And I won the, the senior thesis thing. Like nice. I had the best presentation. So in my head, I'm like, Oh, I'm about to be like, you know, fucking rich and famous and successful and shit because I had the number one thing in the school, in the art <laughs> yeah. school. So, so I was looking at kids in the school who had just graduated and they were working at Jimmy John's and, and mind you, I'm, 20 years old, I think, or 21. Yeah. I'm looking at these kids who just graduated and they're working at Jimmy John's. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like clowning them. I'm like, man, I'll never be as a loser (laughs) as these guys because I just did this senior (laughs) thesis thing. And uh, even after the school, I got super lucky in a way because there was this, I was a house painter for a little bit and I would be painting Uh houses, which is a dumb job too. And, uh, one time there was this dude in the elevator with me and he was like, Hey, you're a house painter. Cool. And he was hitting on me. I didn't really realize it. He was hitting on me. (laughs) And, um, I was like, yeah, but I I was like, yeah, but I paint paintings too. And he was like, really? I'd love to come see him. So I was like, you can come see him right now. And I didn't even know who this guy was. And actually he ended up hooking me up with the dopest, like the best gallery. Well, one of the top three galleries in the, in the, in Milwaukee. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, this is going to lead back to Jimmy John's. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back. But, um, <laughs> so he hooked, so he, Wait, so you he just met this dude in like an elevator or something. Is that what you said? Yeah. And, okay. and literally like, next day, cause this dude wanted to fuck me he, <laughs> next day. He brought me to that gallery and was like, yo, you're going to show Huey. And the, and the gallery was like, yep, we'll put him in the next show. And I was like, holy fuck. So That's in my sick. mind, yeah. So yeah. in my mind, I'm like, I just did that senior thesis thing. Now I'm in the gallery. I got the best gallery and like everyone in my class was like that dude, you got in the best gallery. You got you, you got the best one. That's the best one, you know? So I got in the gallery and then like, um, have my first show sold everything in the show, which was like three pieces. But the amount they gave me was like 900 bucks or something like that. Cause they sold each thing for 600. So I made like 1800 and you get half. So, um, okay. I made like only 900 bucks. So I'm just like, uh, this isn't really that much money. Like I, it, it actually, I could have, if I had the sense to, I could have totally lived off that gallery yeah. back in the day because, I, sorry, this is so long winded, 
No, no, no. I'm going to bring back the Jimmy Johns. But um, <laughs> no. if good, man. I was making these paintings that took way too long to make, like just to even um, to uh, to build them out of wood or, or whatever. What, like if I knew. Was right. it your style, the style that you're doing, like that you've no, been doing like it, recently or was it a little, like something different? It was like, it basically just looked like monster paintings, like cool looking monsters. But, um, okay. They, uh, I've probably seen it. Yeah. Is it on your Instagram? Like way back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe one right. or two of them. Yeah. But, um, yeah. they, uh, yeah, I could have finessed that into like, you know, they, cause they were like, we'll give you full show. But I, I was like, I just didn't understand how to paint, um, fast at the time. So I just was like, it was slow. So, so to supplement that, I, one day I was just like, man, I have no choice but to work at GB Johns because they're the only people that are going to hire. Yeah. Cause I, I, I just like, couldn't even like, wait, so like, why did you, why did you decide Jimmy? There must've been like other places, but you were just like, dude, there was, was. It was in your head. You were just like, I got to work at Jimmy Johns now. Well, uh, here's the fucked up thing, right? Is, um, <laughs> my art school cost was a hundred thousand dollars. Like Holy I shit. didn't even get, <laughs> they hustled me so hard at that school to get me to go to it. And, uh, I didn't get any, I, I got some grants and shit, but like yeah. maybe like four four thousand $4,000 worth. And, uh, I got a scholarship at the very end for like two grand or something. But, uh, yeah, I got like fucked over. And, um, wh- I was friends with like all these kids, you know, and like I, I was in this apartment, pretty nice apartment at the time. And my friend lived next door to us, next door to me. And, um, he got a full ride scholarship and then right out of school, he started working at a graphic design company because they liked his work. And he was making like, I don't know. I saw him like eventually make like 70 grand and he was my next door neighbor. And like, I would have to go to Jimmy John's and, and work. Cause, Cause like, yeah, I, I had a portfolio that I could have worked with him. But the thing is, is I didn't understand that these, these um, places, they don't really care about your skill. They care more that you're commercial. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Yeah. That you're sellable. Yeah like, yeah. like my portfolio, it had like, you know, stuff in it that was like showcase that I had like Photoshop and illustrator skill, mm-hmm. but it was like pictures of dead dog being ran over by cars and crap that I had drawn. You know yeah, what I people mean? People shooting graphics. guns out of their dicks and sh- crazy shit, right? Well, it was, it was skateboard graphics. So like the oh, skateboard okay. graphics, I did, okay. they didn't really look like how they look now. Like it, okay. they look pretty cool. I actually have some right there. I could show you. Um, but we'll just, I'll just tell you, it's just like skulls and stuff. Okay. So like, you know, you show these like nice high end graphic design companies and stuff. They're going to like, nah, we don't do skulls here, you know? Yeah. But but I had the talent to do it, but I just didn't understand how to present it to them. So I had to work at Jimmy John's at the time. And, uh, I like was like, I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to apply there. I refuse. I just kept putting it off and refusing, but then my money yeah. kept like dwindling. Eventually I was like, I, I have, to. cause everyone out of that school, either they worked like the fine art kids that like, they would either work at Jimmy John's or they would work at this place called cap tell, which is you listen on a phone when it, a deaf person is talking to a, person who's not deaf and you like write out in real time the translation for them or whatever so that they can read it oh so the deaf person can understand what they're saying yeah okay yeah. okay yes those yeah. are the so two like, options pretty much yeah that, that <laughs> everyone was that everyone was like you for sure can get this job today if you want you know is either one of those two i like well so you didn't want to like explore like the job market you were just like i just don't want to like you didn't Cause I, I know for me personally, I fucking hate job hunting. So like if I can get a job from a friend or whatever, I'll fucking do that as opposed to like looking through indeed and all that bullshit. I'd rather just get it from a friend. Is that how you were, you were yeah. talking about? The way that I got Jimmy John's was I would just order Jimmy John's all the time. And then the driver was like, dude, you could work for us, man. Cause I, <laughs> I would always give him a, I would always give him a $5 tip because I thought $5 uh-huh. tip would, and this was in 2009. I was always, every time I would give $5 tip and I don't know why I just was like an idiot, I guess. But, um, no, that's a good tip. And then, yeah, the guy was like really happy with it. And he was always like, man, you're so cool. You should work for us. And I was like, I was like, okay, well like, and then I just kept seeing him and seeing him. He's like, dude, you got to work for us. Come work for us. I'm gonna hook you up. And I was like, 
one day, like I, got to, like I said, I got to the point where I just was like, I have to get a job. Yeah. So I, I was doing house painting and, and then like on my own, like I would just paint these two ladies' houses. Then, yeah, that guy like hooked me up with, uh, with Jimmy John's and it was so miserable. Oh my God. <laughs> so fucking miserable. It was just horrible. Corporate restaurants, man. The second you walk in that back door, you like, you see all the corporate speak fucking posters on the wall and, uh, yeah, just the way everything's organized and they have everything so systematic. It just, it fucking depresses me just looking at it. I, I hate that shit, but yeah, like the, like Jimmy John's, I, I like Jimmy John's food and it makes me ill actually, but I like how it tastes, but, um, Wait, I so like, because I like, you work there. No, it makes me oh, ill. Cause they have, it's like, they have too many additives in their shit. Oh yeah. Nitrates and shit. Like it's that, like yeah. chemicals to the max. You eat it. And you <laughs> but just, you just, I just feel sick. But, but I like you how eat it, it anyway. I stopped eating it recently. Cause I can't, I don't like getting sick anymore. Yeah. 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 But, uh, the the thing I don't like about Jimmy John's working there is that they don't dude, you know what it is? The craziest part about all these low paying jobs is I feel like the lowest the lower they pay you, the more they treat you like a robotic like bitch slave. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like McDonald's would probably be like a fucking nightmare because like at Jimmy John's, like they don't let you sit still. Like yeah. they they like oh, yeah. they're like, dude, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, you're you're not doing anything, go clean the toilet. Oh, you're not doing anything. Go dust this thing that doesn't even need to be dusted. That was dusted 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. you're not doing anything. Like go, um, <laughs> yeah. put the bread or go rearrange the breadsticks dude or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Busy work. It's fucking stupid. It's, yeah. Go mop. Me and my best friend talk about it all the time. It's like at those lower paying jobs was like lower end, like corporate jobs. They're like, even if it's a slow fucking day, you can't just sit there and read a book. It's like, there's nothing to fucking do. Just let me read the fucking book. It doesn't fucking yeah, matter. They won't let you do that. No. Yeah. They, and then the other thing is that Jimmy John's dude, they, there's dudes that these places that love doing that. There's dudes that like absolutely love to work at Jimmy John's. Yeah. And uh, those dudes would like hustle at Jimmy John's and they would wait <laughs> and they would know which houses tip more. What the fuck? And they would like hold off and they'd be like, Huey, yeah, they'd be like, Huey, go to that home. That's a good one. You're going to get a lot of money. And you go there and you get like 50 cents. And then you find out like when you come back, they're like, that dude's on a catering run. So he's like about to deliver like a hundred subs. So he's going to get like a $50 tip because it's like a hundred subs. Jesus, man. So they're just playing the system. <laughs> the Jimmy yeah, so system. Like, yeah. What and then the that dude actually, fuck? that dude actually that I'm talking about, he actually ended up making up his own like thing that was like seamless, but before seamless or like DoorDash. He like okay. made up his own version of it and like uh, he's probably rich off it now. But the other dude I was working with there too, <laughs> I remember how I told you I just got out of school and I was like thinking I was a badass and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I told – this was 2009 or 2010 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I worked with this one guy and I was like uh, – we were just like talking about our goals and aspirations in life. And this is so fucking funny to me to think about now because this guy was like – um. He just looked like a douchebag, at whatever that even looks like. But uh, what, he was wait, like, what, what kind of douchebag? We're talking like DJ douchebag, or are we talking about like Jersey Shore douchebag? Jersey Shore douchebag, kind of for real. Also, oh, like like buff sort of chains yeah. and shit like that. Sort of ish. Yeah, he just like looks like he listened to Drake a shitload, something <laughs> okay. like that. Oh, like know, that. Like, okay, I know. Yeah, like like he's got like the fucking hairline hairlines all fucking yeah perfect. he would he would shit. have that maybe but <laughs> this was before that okay so i remember talking to that guy and i was like you know i was like dude i'm about to move to new york i'm gonna be hooked up with these people out there which i thought i was like i'm gonna you know i'm killing it here when i get out there i'm gonna like really kill it i'm gonna destroy you know i'm gonna run shit i'm moving to new york you know i'm gonna yeah. run shit and he was like okay, well, I'm going to go buy houses and I'm going to rent them out to people. And I'm doing that now. He's like, and I'm going to not stop for like the next 20 years. He's like, I'm going to buy a house and get money from it and buy another house. And I was like, Jesus. that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're stupid. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, I was like, you're an idiot. <laughs> but actually, I do think he's an idiot kind of because that's, right I before feel the like housing I did crash. No, I I, okay, I, don't, right. I I just think I don't think he's an idiot. I guess I just look at it like 
the way I see it is like, okay, I'm broke. Well, I'm not like broke. I guess I'm yeah. broke, but like, I get to do what I want to do and I have fun like all the time. Yeah. And like, I see that, I see like that is like, yeah, you're getting like hella money, but like, I feel like you're not like enjoying life. Maybe, you know, maybe oh, you definitely. are, I guess maybe, maybe if, if you, if you like to be flashy and have money and shit, like hell yeah. yeah. Like I'm sure that guy drives a badass car and stuff, but like, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather. Is he an interesting, doing... fun guy to talk to? Probably not. He's probably just going to talk about real estate all fucking night. Yeah. Drink I, I Red don't Bulls know. and vodkas and, and kind of. I have no idea be, where he went, yeah. but I just remember talking about that. And I'm sure he's super successful now, you know. <laughs> but what if he's not? Well, he's still at Jimmy John's. Have you been to that Jimmy John's? He might be. He might be. When was the last time he went he to that Jimmy be. John's, man? I actually went there like less than a year ago because I was on that street randomly. When I was in Milwaukee. Was anybody still there? Mm-mm. No, damn. No, that place turnover is ridiculous. Like, oh, you, yeah, I'm a sure. Lot of people were right there for like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Places like that, they just, there's no one staying there. Even the managers, yeah. they get tired and they leave. But, but I, I know what you're talking about. Like being in, being like a young, like artist or like somebody who wants to do art, you're like, oh, you want to get money? You're fucking stupid, man. Money comes and yeah, goes. Yeah, I don't yeah, give yeah. a fuck about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably set up for life at this point if he really yeah. stuck to that. And I'm not hating, dude. I'm the dumbass in that situation, not him. Yeah, me you know, too. Like, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I kind of feel like I'm, I, I, I'm also kind of glad I stuck to my guns though, because, like I said, I do have a career now of what I want to do. It just mm-hmm. took me like, it took me like a bunch of just miserable struggling shitty moments to figure it out yeah same here man but uh yeah so wait what um what was was the work like there do you remember like walking in the first the first day and like you get those the training and all that kind of shit because the i feel like corporate training they threw you in they they don't even train you there they're like no they're like you're gonna please we're desperate (laughs) (laughs) no they're just like the guy just tells you what to do like you do that, you're going to okay. do this right now. Go do this. Okay. Now you're going to do that. Do that. You know, like I remember so that you were just day delivery day, driver, right? Yeah. But it, when you're not delivering, you have to like scrub the toilet. Do I remember the guys told me like, you're going to like, he was like, go scrub the toilet. Yeah. He was like, go scrub the toilet. So I was like, holy shit. Okay. And I went and scrubbed it. Right. And then I went back and he's like, dude, you didn't scrub it the right <laughs> way. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And he like yeah. got on his hands and knees and like scrubbed under the bowl, like just like scrubbed like into the hole, like all the way into it's like, dude, he like oh, had his fuck. scrub, scrub the brush, like into that hole where your shit goes. Like he, <laughs> his fingers were almost touching the water and he was like twisting the brush and like getting it in there and like trying to pull shit out of it. And I'm like, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> why are we scrubbing the inside of the shithole <laughs> the toilet looks clean that's crazy that's insane like he wanted it to be so you could eat out of it i guess or something. was that was that the manager or owner telling you to do that or was that just no a, it was the guy who employee. got me hired an employee holy shit the, the, the yeah. delivery driver who you tipped every day the, yes wow he was in the cult dude he just believed it he's like jimmy johns has got to be clean yeah i'm you like clean bro it. why do we care about that like, who really cares like we're working at jimmy john's wait so in we're that, in that situation that. yeah definitely not yeah do you actually tell him that and i was seeing shit come out of the hole holy shit yeah i'm like dude i'm not doing that i don't even fuck <laughs> no i think i actually i was a <clears throat> i was a pushover most of my i mean i still like i, I don't know like who i am online and who i am in reality is like completely fucking different like i i'm th- pretty sure when he showed me i was like okay i'll do it you know sure but then you don't Let's do it. Get the shit out of the hole. No, I did it. I'm pretty sure I did oh, do it after that. Shit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh definitely my god, got the shit dude! Out of the hole. <laughs> you just yeah, it was nasty right in there, huh? Oh fuck. Yeah. Man. Well, then one time I went and uh, delivered to this chick, and uh, she was in like a mansion, dude. And like she answered the door, and she like looked like she was wearing like a, like almost like a bikini, and she was like smoking fucking hot. And she was hitting on me and shit. And she was like, yeah, hey, Jimmy John's driver. Like smoking, like smacking on me. And I was just like <laughs> shocked. And I was like, all right, thanks. And I like left. I didn't do anything <laughs> about it. I just let it happen. And then I just was like, 
I was you, like <laughs> thinking like, should I go back? And then I was like, no. <laughs> this, I, I was like a little different. This yeah, were you like, like depressed or what? Or what? You're just like, this was when I was like a kid, kind of like. Yeah. Uh, if I if that would have happened to me when I was like 26 and 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 over, I would have like got fired for that easily. But like, I don't know. Like I was like different back then. I guess like I was like tim- a lot more timid. Yeah. So I yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I remember but, one time yeah. actually though that they jimmy john's they like pay you out at the end of the night your your tips or whatever cash, and like cash tip, i got yeah. something like that and like i got like way more than i should have and i went home with it and uh it was like 200 dollars more than i should have got and i was like i'm not telling anybody about this and then uh the next day this dude like called me and he's like you took the you took the tip money we know you took it I was like, well, I have it. Like, I didn't try to hide it, but I didn't really like look. He's like, well, I'm going to come. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to come and get it. And he came over and like, he was all pissed. And I was like, dude, I didn't yeah. like, try to rip you off, but I didn't say anything either. He's like, you should have said something. You wasted our time. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I just don't like care dude, that these, much. Yeah. All these jobs are just as like, so um, indifferent to them. And I, it's, I'm the idiot. Cause like, I'm the one who had to work for them. But at the same time, like we live in a, I'm not anti-capitalist, so a lot of people would be, but we live in a capitalist fucking society where a lot of these people, they don't really want to do these jobs, but they're like forced into filling these mm-hmm. positions. And that was basically me, you know, like, cause like later on in life, when I worked for these like art handling jobs, I like gained respect for like working in a, in a job, you know, I'm like, I would actually yeah. try to work really hard and like try to like, please the upper people because I actually took pride in what I did. Yeah. But the <laughs> service jobs for some reason, man, I just couldn't. Well, if I could go back and to do it again, I like if I had to go work at Jimmy John's tonight, I would like probably, probably try harder maybe, but I, I would you really like, though? Would you No, because, because I know that I can make more money doing what I do now, yeah. but not very much more, but, um, I don't know when I'm doing something for someone else. I I care more sometimes now. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I do I could myself. That. Yeah, yeah. You have a little bit of more responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, when you're working for yourself, sometimes you you can you can you can get to be. Uh, I'm kind of like a slacker, I guess. Too. I don't know. It's yeah. It's Same hard here. to explain. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of procrastination, and then you go, "Oh fuck, I need I need to get this shit going," and then you freak out. And you do a lot of stuff, and then you you get, "I, I did a lot of stuff," and I can relax a little bit and then that's how that's my cycle anyway yeah yeah it's the that jimmy john's i worked at it was all these hippie kids oh and a uh, bunch of drugs was it a pretty drug heavy place no they didn't do drugs or anything like that oh yeah. i got a good story dude i'm sorry i feel like my stories for this are just total shit and i haven't no. even made, told anything believe me. funny at believe all believe me they're not believe me they're not oh they're, okay these are well great. all right yeah all right, so you want to hear a good story? This is a oh, good yeah. story. So the guy, my friend, one of my friends, she tells me that I always tell blue ball stories, which are like stories that like you think they're going to be the shit and there's no like punch to the end and this is going to be a blue ball story. <laughs> so okay. the guy who hired me at Jimmy John's, this is the story. The uh, um, the delivery driver? The guy you were No, there's a guy. there was a guy above him. Okay, so the guy he, who actually like gave you the, like hired you and yeah. stuff? Okay, yeah, okay. the guy who actually hired me, he had one tattoo and it was right here. It was really big. You want to know what it was? What was that? What was it? The the ESPN logo. Why? Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He had ESPN tattooed really big. Was it a good tattoo or did it look like shit? It, it, look- it looked cool. I, I always was like, <laughs> dude, that is a tight tattoo actually because it was so stupid. Wait. But you're, yeah, you're like into, your artwork has full of like logos and like. like yeah, yeah. All kinds I of thought it was fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was dope as fuck because I thought it was so, so stupid. Like, <laughs> so I was you like, guys had a, for different reasons. Get... Yeah. You thought he was dope well, for thought, different reasons than I kind of thought sure. he was dope. I thought he, I almost thought he got it ironically because I was like. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know why he had it. I never asked him, but it, he didn't seem like he cared about ESPN at all. Because who uh-huh. would? I mean, who likes ESPN like that? Like they like the channel. You know I mean? They love the commentary. They love the program. Dude, it's like yeah. <laughs> he was like a he looked like a hipster. He looked kind of cool, but he wasn't okay. a hipster. I don't know. Is 
But uh, okay, I, I know people then, like that who like get like weird. Um, like the, I know this people be, like Microsoft. Oh yeah, this so this is before all that kind of. Sh- yeah, that kind of stuff? this was before right. people even had tattoos like that. This was when like people okay. really didn't have very many. Like nobody had tattoos and nobody had like piercings and colored hair and shit like they do today. Like uh, yeah, it was it was odd. And then the fucking thing I hated the most about that Jimmy John's is we the the dude who was like the manager for us. He would always make us listen to Neil Young. Neil Young yeah. ain't bad, but just endless Neil Young every oh, day, yeah. all day long. Eight hours of anything. Fucking insane. Fucking sucks. Yeah. You're just like, just at a endless point, Neil you just Young. Stop. Yeah. What was the, it's what just, was the, what was the culture like there? Like the, uh, the crew, was it just a bunch of fuck offs and like, like drug they addicts? They were just and, hippies, like, just, dude. Just, Hip- just, they weren't even drug addicts. They were hippies. Like they were just all hippies. Like there's a girl who had, she was cute. She had two pigtails and she had like her tongue mm-hmm. pierced and she was like a raver. Okay. And then there was like this Asian dude who like was into like racing and shit. And then there was like a hick guy. That's the guy who get caught the money from me. And then there was like that dude that listened to Neil Young, who was like a hippie. Then there was an the ESPN tattoo guy. And then there was a dwarf dude. Well, I don't know if he was actually a dwarf, but he was really short. And I told you about him and he, I was telling him like, Oh yo, I'm a painter, you know? And I was like, dude, I, I'm going to move to New York to pursue painting soon, you know? And he was like, I actually, I'm about to start my own business too as a painter. Or like, he's like, I'm starting this painting company up. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, we're going to produce paintings for people. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, what? What? And he was like, yeah, like, we're going to produce paintings of Rambo on <laughs> black velvet. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you know, like black velvet, the material. Yeah, like, he's like, well, I'm right going to hire people. Holy shit. Yeah. Smith. He's like, I'm going to hire people to paint Rambo on black velvet and we're going to sell those like mass produced. And then I, I always, did I he, was, he'd always, did he think uh, Rambo on. was like, <laughs> hold on. And then uh, I was just so like, questions. yeah, I was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then, and then I'd see him another day and he'd be like, yeah, I'm looking in my John Rambo shit, like or whatever. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then, and then I went into his office and he had black velvet painting of Rambo in his office. Wow. And I don't know to this day, I'm pretty sure he was just trolling me because he was talking about his painting and he probably just bought it at a thrift store, but he just was like so serious about it that I just don't understand. Like, I don't know. And, and you, that dude, have you looked up that guy? Is he, does he have the, the black light or black velvet paintings? No, up running in? no? Uh, he's totally bullshitting. He, he was <laughs> like, um, he, he ran like all the Jimmy Johns in Milwaukee. Like he was like the, general manager of like the chains so he would like go he'd be like at one jimmy john's one day and at another jimmy john's the next day yeah so like i'm sure that that dude is like that's the thing dude is i look back on all this shit and i'm like you know i pursued my dreams and stuff like i really did like go to the end of pursuing your dreams like i went to so far to like and like i threw away my life pursuing my dreams like i didn't party or anything and like you know, these dudes, I'm sure they got, did coke and drink, got wasted and like, just like fucked off, but they did this like general manager shit and they're probably retired by now or like have like a no, decent, dude, definitely not. Well, like no, the dude, if, if that dude owns, I, I'm saying like, if that dude owns like 10 Jimmy Johns, he's set. There's no way. Yeah, he's not. but there's no way he, he, I don't think that dude, you don't own 10 Jim. 10 Jimmy John's and then still try to pursue an art career. I think he, he was a failed no, artist no, I, who was like trying to, no, I, I, I don't think he was an artist. He wasn't an artist. I think he was just trolling me about it being a business. Do you know what I mean? You think so? I, I don't know. I kind of genuinely, I just heard the story from you third hand, but I still kind of believe him because black light he, no, or, or uh, he, uh, black velvet paintings are, are like are kind of low key popular. No, nah, maybe he, well, he, he looked like, dude, he looked like, um, who's Harry Potter's friend, that big hairy guy, Hagrid. He looked like Hagrid, but not fat. And he was like <laughs> short and skinny. Okay. And like, uh, yeah, he I just like did it. He wasn't a hipster at all. He was just like, um, <clears throat> he wasn't hip or cool. He was just like a dude who like just came and, and wanted to work and like get shit done and go mm-hmm. home, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing is that all these jobs, the, you know, I'll go and work. And then I'll go home and I'll paint and try to like hustle the painting and try to talk to galleries on the internet, try to talk to other artists, try to do anything to try to level up my painting career right after the job, you know, was over every day, you know? Yeah. 
<clears throat> that's why I like look at these people. And I'm like, damn, the guy who fucking did the apartment shit after work, that guy's probably set, you know, he, I don't know. No, nah, dude, Whatever. I, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat, me and, and my, my friend, like we did the same thing for, for years. I worked in kitchens and then on my days off, I worked the, the least amount of like days possible so that I can spend my time off, like making my shit, writing, doing whatever I can, contacting people and shit like that, just reaching out and just keep like trying to like grow and, and, and be a better artist. But I think a lot of people in the industry, they just like have these dreams and then they don't actually do them. I've, I've learned that, that like a lot of people bullshit and they talk a lot, but no one's actually really doing anything. That's, that's my take. Right. But yeah, I met a lot of, I met a lot of aspiring, uh, restaurant people when I worked art handling jobs. Yeah. At the food places, I never would meet. I never met anyone who's like really into food, but at, at, at art handling, yeah, of course. I would meet like chefs. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, how, no, think, is that how it is at the food places? Yeah. Like hiring places, it's a lot of people who just really give a shit about food, but it's weird. Cause I'm, I'm the other way. Like, uh, I'm, I work at a high end restaurant, but all I care about is art and like, and writing and, and artistic creative stuff. I think I'm a pretty good line cook, but that's kind of where it ends for me. You know, really? I but like, you I like, like, I like, but food. you like tying food into it though. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I just like the, the connection of art and, and, and cooking and, and the service industry is endlessly, endlessly like interesting, like shit. We're talking right now about Jimmy John's and the same shit happens at fucking high end restaurants. It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, everywhere. yeah. It's fucking universal. Yeah. It's just well, when you get a bunch of people in a room, you know, you're gonna get personalities come through and then there's gonna yeah. be people and that are gonna take advantage of the situation and shit every time. It's something about the service industry that's like um kind of under stress because it's like or under duress because it's like you don't really want to fucking be there, but you have to make fucking money. On top of that, like all the customers treat you like shit and you're making shit wages. So it's just like, it's a right. fucking powder cake of fucking bullshit, you know? Yeah. It, 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 I, I, I live in this little town here, man. And sometimes I like, if I could get my shit together enough, I'd like to hi- like go to the Jimmy John's and like steal an employee. I've like <laughs> dreamed about that. If I could what do you mean steal? To. What do you mean steal like, an employee? Like just go in there and be like, Hey, you want to quit Jimmy John's and work for me as like an artist assistant? Art, artist now? assistant? Yeah. There you yeah. go. If I ever could afford to do that, I'd love to, but it's like, yeah, you know, that would be sick. Cause I know that place is a fucking nightmare. Uh, Cause I, I, I like almost had enough to do that. Well, like I had, a, I didn't even close to have enough to do that, but I just fantasized about doing that one time when I was at family dollar. Cause there was this really cool kid that was working there. Wait, were you working at family dollar or were you? No, I just was in there picking shit oh, up. Okay. Okay. And I was like, dude, if I ever can afford to like hire you, I'm going to come back. Cause I almost could at one point. Yeah. Are you friends with any of the people you met in, in service still? Cause I feel like you meet the coolest people in service. In food service? N- no. Wait, I'm thinking. No. I, I'm Facebook friends. I think with one of or two of them, but I don't have, okay. I don't even remember their names anymore. But, uh, yeah. the, but in art handling, yeah, I am, but not yeah. like, not like on a level where like I talk to them regularly, but like maybe I'll talk to them maybe like once every two months briefly on Instagram, yeah. like a message. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, uh, why did you end up leaving, uh, Jimmy John? What was the situation there? I left Jimmy. Oh, I think I told did you. It end, uh, did it end badly? Do, yeah. Well, I, I thought it was going to end because I was going to move to New York and I was going to blow up. But I, it mm-hmm. ended because I uh, got fired because I smelled like bo, <laughs> and that dwarf, that dwarf guy fired me. I forgot about that. So were you constantly smell like bo, or were you just like? According to him, <laughs> but these are the guys that want to d- dig in the hole for shit. So <laughs> apparently, nothing's clean enough for them. Yeah. <laughs> and I have never worn deodorant since then, so I probably still smell like bo. <laughs> Well, I've never heard like, anybody I smell else like besides BO that guy. I've been fucking working so hard getting the shit out of the toilet. Fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I smell like BO. I mean, I've, I've asked people, but I've worked other <laughs> jobs and I've never heard them tell me that I smell like shit. That sounds like a guy who was like using that as an excuse. Right. Yeah. That yeah, sounds yeah, like exactly. it, right? Were you, yeah. were you ter- did you feel like you were terrible at that job or were you just, you just didn't really give a fuck? Uh, 
I I like did what they asked me to do, but I didn't like go out of my way to like, yeah. like be a shining star or whatever. You know what I mean? Because there's like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like, what are they gonna do? Give me a fifty cent raise? Like I just didn't fucking care. Oh my! And God, like they man. didn't they didn't hook you. Yeah. Like I would be like, yo, let me take let me take that delivery, and they'd be like, no. Like you know, I'd be like, let me take a nice delivery, and they'd be like, no. Oh, they'd be like, you're gonna take a shitty delivery. Yeah. Like, period you know so it's like oh so they just kept well, you in the shit yeah yeah so like if you're being kept in the shit like what like the and you know like you'd see people get fired every day or leave every day for another thing and it's like well this is just a purely shit job yeah you know like it, it was in the armpit of milwaukee like in the most mm-hmm. busiest part you know so you, you know like it, i was just a cog a temporary cog in the wheel there for like a minute you know yeah how long do you end up working there overall Probably three months, three to Damn, six dude, months. See, your whole your whole stint in food service was like not that much at all. It was just like no, a couple little. My, my dishwashing was probably three six months. No, probably three months. And then my uh, the bougie place was probably three to six months. And then Jimmy John's was three to six months. So probably less than a year if you put it all together. And then also uh, maybe more than a year actually, but. Yeah. Uh, also, I was not working at any of those jobs full time. It was all part time. <laughs> yeah, just just working art on the side or doing art on the yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I had that gallery I was working with, and um, and it wasn't really like I was living off it because I also had uh, food stamps at the time, and I also had two roommates, and we lived in the hood. Like we lived in the hood so hard, yeah. that like my roommate got attacked by with a dude with a pipe and got robbed and like had to get plastic surgery after Jesus. Holy shit. Yeah. My friend, a bunch of my friends were getting shot in the knees. Cause there was like gangs Jesus. that would shoot. Yeah. Shoot you in the knees. And then, um, uh, they, the other thing is that Jimmy John's. Okay. So the store we worked at P- Jimmy John's de- delivery drivers were getting killed for their tips. What? Constantly. Oh, you mean like they see a delivery driver leave the house, right? And they just fucking rob him. Come out and shoot him in the head and take the tips. What the fuck? They don't even like try yeah, to rob him. They just shoot him straight happening. in the head. Holy shit. Constantly happening. Yeah. It happened, I think, three times yeah. when I worked there. Why are they worried about the shit in the, in the fucking toilet bowl? They're not worried about <laughs> safety at all? Like, that's crazy. I don't know. It they happened so much. Like, people kept getting fucking killed. Jimmy John's delivery drivers were always getting shot and killed. And I was did like, they, wow, I'm like, did they address it at all? Like corporate kind of no, thing? No, no never heard just shit like, about what? it. Just damn. Yeah. It's like they're dude. They were getting robbed constantly. For, I didn't, luckily I didn't get robbed for tips, but yeah. yeah. So I was just kind of like, this is fucking not even worth. And the thing that made Jimmy no. John's really not worth it was, um, they, they don't pay your gas. It's like you drive your what do you car. Mean? Yeah. You drive Are you your fucking car. kidding me right now? Yeah, they tip. They get. They pay you like seven dollars an hour plus tips. And so there's like, no you gas. Drive your car. There's no per diem for gas. No per diem for gas. No. Holy shit! Wait, so nope. half, so like half of your fucking tips and your your income is just deleted by fucking by gas costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your car takes wear and tear too. Of course. You know? Wow, yeah, man. Like, and I had a nice car actually at the time too because. My mom fucking hooked me up with her car after I graduated. That's fucking horrible. Yeah, it was so stupid. Uh, but wait, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I never, I've never like worked a delivery job, but like, what is that like? So you come into work and they like just have like a shitload of like deliveries set up for you, or like you just sit around like waiting for a delivery much, to come in, or what? Pretty much. Like sometimes they would call you and I would answer the phone, and then I would read the stupid script, and then. Um, write down what they want, give it to the guy and then I'm out the door with the, the sub, the single order. Or sometimes I'd come back and there'd be like six orders and they'd be like, get out of here, get them now, get, get them, go, you're late. <laughs> and it was just so okay. dumb. It's just, it's, a, it's just like the dumbest thing. Like, let me grab these bags and run out of a door so I can give it to someone so fast that they can eat it so fast. Like, it's just so dumb. Yeah. Do you have Jimmy John's by you? Yeah, I've never had it actually. I might have it after this. Oh, dude, but, it's good as fuck. It's so good. Is it just I love it's just sandwiches guys. though? So like they just buy meat from like Boar's Head, right? And they yeah. just make sandwiches, right? No, <laughs> it's it's good. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's its own shit. Jimmy John's is their own shit. Like every okay. like Quiznos right. subs sucks. 
uh, cousin sub sucks. Jimmy John's they're like really good. It's like their own thing, dude. You gotta okay. It, it's not right. it's not like anything crazy, but they're good. And then um, I know I know one more story. I forgot. Um, my okay. roommate at the time also worked at Jimmy John's. He was like a manager, and he would always get mad at me because I didn't care. You know. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. But I remember one time he was like slicing up uh, ham on the job, and uh-huh. it was a pig's eye was stuck into the ham. Like Did embedded. You, he kept slicing. Yeah, he was just kept like fuck it. it. Like he just took the eye out and like sliced it. He was like, yeah, sometimes there'll be a pig's eye in there. Sometimes. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Well, but I, I just, just thought it was. I just funny. I just love the idea of like you guys going home and like you're trying to do some art and your friends like you really need to care about these subs, okay? This no, is your he, future. Here. That that guy, we, he was hustling and he rented out our apartment to I think seven people at a time. So we what had these mean? people, yeah, like he, he had all these rooms and like he would just rent them to people like seven. So I had like seven apart. So I had like seven roommates at that place at one time. Jesus. And, and I remember one time our roommates, one of our roommates decided to like say like, fuck you to him and they wouldn't pay rent. So they barricaded themselves into their room. <laughs> and then when we would be at Jimmy John's, they would come yeah. out and eat all of our food. <laughs> and then they would rebarricade. <laughs> And then uh, finally, my friend got sick of it and kicked the door into their room. And they came out and they had a fist fight. And his girlfriend even got in on the fist fight. She was like this little scrawny chick. And they're like yeah. fist fighting in the, in the fucking foyer or whatever. And then the next day, the state came and kicked everybody out of that house. Jesus, Like the man. state of Wisconsin or whatever. <laughs> because they found out that there was so many people living in that house. Holy to give shit. You pers- to- to give you more perspective on my whole struggle with just getting to where I'm at right now, which isn't really that far at one point in New York, like wait, this was like 10 years after the restaurant situation. I lived in one house that had 43 roommates. Jesus man. Uh, When I lived in this place, uh, six, five, nine park Ave in New York, I had 43 different roommates, but that was over a period of time. But yeah. Holy shit. Jesus man. So yeah. Cause, cause I told you I had that hundred grand debt. Yeah. Yeah. When you have a hundred K fucking student loans, you have to like, (laughs) and, and you can't get like a corporate job, you know? Have you, have you paid that down? Have you gotten that, that paid it all off? Yep. Holy shit, man. Good for you. By myself. Well, my mom helped me actually for the first couple of years. Holy fuck. That's terrible. Yeah. I got pissed when Joe Biden fucking gave people back. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, thanks for doing that after I paid mine. (laughs) Fuckhead. Uh, yeah. And oh, everyone's like, thought. you gotta be yeah. happy for them. You gotta be happy. Like, yeah, fuck you. You didn't even pay your student loan. Probably. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. So wait, so was the Jimmy John's job the, so you kept talking about going to New York. You're like, I'm going to fucking New York. I'm doing it. I'm yeah. Do it. Like, and was yeah, that the job was where you were it. just like, fucking, I'm getting out of here after you got fired? No. After Jimmy John's, after Jimmy John's, I relied off that gallery for a while because i my rent was so cheap and i was like pretty much that was my main income was that gallery and like just odd shit here and there selling things i would like find on the street because my rent overhead wasn't really that high and my mom was like paying my loans and i'm just gonna be Mm -hmm. honest you know she just was for a while yeah and my i think they're even paying yeah she was paying my phone bill and my fucking loans so i didn't really have like that much expenses because like my food stamps paid for my food <clears throat> and then uh i only had to come up with like 150 bucks a month so like Damn. if the gallery sold a painting for 600 bucks that was 300 so that's rent for the next two months you know yeah jesus so man. yeah that art, but that art when dream. i moved to new york yeah, when I moved to New York, my rent increased to eight hundred dollars a month, and then my loans. My mom was like, "You're paying your loans yourself," and then my grandma or whoever was like, "You're paying your credit or your fucking phone bill." So then I started working as a full time art handler, and that was when I like grew up somewhat, yeah, ish, in like as far as responsibilities go. But, uh, so when did you uh, when did you end up like? Moving, moving back to you said you moved back to your 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 hometown or the small town. Yeah, I lived in New York for ten years, and um, no fucking way, man. My, like, was, 
Was that where you were doing all that crazy shit with the fucking like legend? Yeah, that shit was fucking nuts. Like I remember there was a moment when you were like, you did the crazy viral shit, right? Where he was, he had the tits, right? And you were like screaming the street, and that went yeah. viral. That went crazy viral. I remember yeah, there was yeah. like WWE, like people like following you, something, something like crazy. Or no, no, no the dude yeah. from uh, that band. What was that band? Uh, Lincoln Park. No, no, no. The, I had the, the dude from Lincoln you, Park, Jeremy. <laughs> but you had the and you also had, the, had Action Bronson, Jeremy too. Oh shit! No, Michael, I remember Michael Rappaport. The, the, the. Uh, oh, trapped. Man, the band you were trapped. Thank you. Trapped. Yes, the band you were singing in the. He shared it, and then he like got into like a battle with you a little bit. It was fucking great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I loved yeah. when you like kind of like you went down and you started doing Omegles with like the legend. Uh, like in what in like a Walmart um vest and stuff. Like like he fell. Like he like he'd like fallen from glory and he's like he's like I I gotta work at Walmart now, man. <laughs> that was that was great. Um I'm still doing that character. I should actually address that. Um why I haven't been like doing it as much is because it got to the point with Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Where they're like, dude, if you do that shit one more time, we're deleting you. Period. Dude, I don't understand it. They're so strict. It's like, do you not understand irony, satire, like <clears throat> yeah, any sort of like nuance? They, they don't get it. They got well. the t- The thing is, is I have so much crate. I'm not stopping doing it. The thing is, is like, uh, there's like it's multiple layers to it. Like the so the if I do it again. They're going to remove my account and I don't want to lose my followers. That's the first thing. Second thing is I just had a daughter like three days ago and I just don't understand how to navigate that really yet. I think I do. I just don't want to raise my daughter like being like, hey, look at these dicks and fuck the world and fuck fish. (laughs) So like I I just kind of want to like have a moment. And then the other thing is I don't have a filmer here. Like I do have a filmer here, but... I'm just going to say it's not a good match mm-hmm. right now because it's just not a, it's not, it's not working out with me and this filmer. And that's the only filmer I have here. So, yeah. uh, cause I can't really take my girlfriend. It's too dangerous to do what I was doing in the street. Cause I got like guns pulled on me and shit. And, uh, Oh, for like screaming in the street and shit. Damn. Yeah. The other yeah, thing I is, um, I bet. the other thing with that shit is that, uh, people were seeing me and I'll go viral. I went viral. I counted. I went viral 17 different times. It, it's really valuable to go viral, but the, the shit that would happen when I go viral is like, is that the audience that comes in from that is people that think I'm a crazy crackhead. You see what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? People who don't so realize like, that you're, ju- that you're doing a character. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. performance. So like, uh, I want to be seen as I stopped doing it because I want to be seen as a performer and uh, I want to like okay. do, I want to come up with something else that uh-huh. shows like, oh shit, he's like legit really great at doing this character and come up with characters rather than like, oh, it's a crazy crackhead. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's basically, it's not that I'm going to stop doing it because I just did the legend again like three months ago when I was in Sweden, but uh, in Denmark. But I saw that. Yeah. You were screaming in the uh, street. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you brought the, you brought the like tits. How was it bringing the tits through fucking for customs? They actually, they actually pulled the tits out of a box to check because they want to see if they work because they went through the X-ray. And I was like, "Can't please film this? Please let me film this." And they're like, "No." And then they made me tape. If you had filmed that, it would have been amazing. Yeah, and uh, they they made me tape up the box with like the shit that said like inspected by customs. And <laughs> okay, it was cool. Like, uh, but yeah, I I can't. Uh, I gotta be known for. I have to like do something else that's great that that shows like I'm a great performer I feel like you know that's where I'm at right now that's why I'm like haven't been I put out this one the other day and I was 100% sure that it was like what I was trying to do you know like I distilled like the legend like everything that's great about the legend into this like formula I was like this shit I could apply this shit to anything like I could dress however I want. I could like even just be myself in with this formula and it's going to pop off. And like, I was a hundred percent sure. And I put it out and it was like crickets. You know what I mean? Like 
I thought that I figured out how to distill that right into like you could I could make a PG thirteen legend or even a PG okay. legend with the, uh-huh. what I thought in my head. Yeah, and I was somewhat right, but mm-hmm. I was also wrong. So like I don't know, like it just take it's just like fucking with a Rubik's cube, dude. It's like you just gotta just keep trying and trying and trying. You know, keep figuring it out. Yeah, I actually I actually don't want to be. Um, I want to have this thing at the end of the day. I want to have this character that is PG, uh-huh. but that everyone is like, holy shit, that's hilarious. Like, you know, like I, I, I don't want to make something that alienates. I don't want to make a, a character that alienates race, uh, religious background, sex. Like I, I want kids to be able to see it eventually. Not right now. Like I know the legend is like a crackhead <laughs> and they're not for kids, but I'm saying yeah. like, eventually I would like to make something that's like, perfect but it, it just takes time you know oh yeah yeah so that i i have not i have not um disappeared i'm just um trying to recalibrate right now and i'm actually i've been failing a lot lately because i'm trying to find a workaround uh right now but it will happen and i think it's going to happen really soon actually but because i have something planned but it might fail too, but I think that I found a workaround. Yeah. But we'll see. You, are you are you uh, still painting and everything every every day? Yeah, I mean the, the having a daughter like threw a little wrench in the gears, but I'm gonna go tonight. And uh, like I said, I think I'm going to hopefully surpass what I did with the legend. Hopefully soon, I'm hoping to. It might take me a while, but I think I understand the mechanics though of why it worked. So I'm gonna try to continue to make it work. Yeah. So tonight, tonight I have like, I went and got a bunch of shit. So I'm ready to throw another attempt tonight. You know. All right. But uh, yeah. <laughs> nice man. So. Yeah. Well, all right, man. I think I think that's a good good place to call it quits, man. End it. Fuck yeah. Um. All right, dude. All right. Have a good night, man. I just ate this Jimmy John sandwich. I gotta say the. Meat's all right. You know, you can tell it's like bought in. It's not bad. It's not chewy. It's not, it's whatever. It's all right. Flavors are there. It's, it's a standard sandwich. What really brings it down a few notches is the bread. The bread's really, really bad. Zero out of 10. I wouldn't use it as a doorstopper. Other thing, on top of that, I hate a fucking messy sandwich. Shit coming out the side. If I'm eating an Italian, if I'm eating any kind of sub, I shouldn't have to treat it like a sloppy Joe. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Also, I had to add peppers on to it. You know, it, the sandwich is whatever. So, two out of ten, probably wouldn't eat it again. Chips, on the other hand, is fucking good, man. Really good. Probably, probably, I'd, I'd probably, I put them up there with the with the with the Cape Cods and the H E B kettle chips. You know what I mean? And I like the flavor of the barbecue chips. I'm gonna say eight out of ten. I'd bathe in them. Legend shit. <laughs>